Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight, and it's Friday, March 20th, 2015. Now, in response to an op-ed piece that appeared in the Washington Post this last Sunday, we have an article up on InfoWars.com from Consortium News. A neocon admits the plan to bomb Iran. Yes, Joshua Moravchik wrote on the Washington Post, he said, the title initially on the print version was, War is the Only Way to Stop Iran. They toned that down a little bit on the online version. They said, War with Iran is probably our best option. But this is what he said. He agrees with Netanyahu's hysterical view of Iran, but he recognizes that killing international negotiations on limiting Iran's nuclear program would leave only one realistic option. He said in the op-ed piece on the Washington Post, what if force is the only way to block Iran from gaining nuclear weapons? That, in fact, is probably the reality. Then he goes on to say, does this mean that our only option is war? He says, yes. Then he goes on to say, but we can strike as often as necessary. You know, we have struck Iran quite a bit. The American public doesn't really realize that. Our memory of Iran really extends back to the takeover of the U.S. Embassy. We don't really remember that our government overthrew their democratically elected government. Our CIA did it. And then our CIA trained the Savak after they put in the Shah. They used the Shavak to torture any opposition to the Shah. That's the kind of government that we gave Iran that they suffered under for decades before they overthrew that government and then occupied the American embassy. We only remember their occupation of the American embassy. We also don't remember that the U.S. military accidentally, likely, shot down an Iranian commercial jet plane. Now, if that had happened the other way around, we would have never accepted the explanation that that was done accidentally. We have looked for every kind of provocation we can find in order to get at Iran's oil, to control it. We have established dictators, we've established a ruthless terrorist regime, and we look, looks like we're gonna try to do that again. They go on to point out that Iran doesn't have a history of attacking its neighbors either. They were involved in the Iran-Iraq war, but Iraq was goaded on by our ally, Saudi Arabia, as well as the United States, to attack Iran. They go on to say, not only did Netanyahu wildly exaggerate the danger from Iran, but he ignored the fact that Iran's involvement in Iraq and Syria has come at the invitation of those governments to help fight the terrorists of al-Qaeda's Nusra Front and the Islamic State. Now, that ties into our next article, where David Petraeus says that Iran is a greater threat than ISIS or ISIL, whichever you want to call it. It's Iran that's the threat. It's our allies, Saudi Arabia, it's our allies, ISIS, the ones that we trained, that are beheading people left and right. But David Petraeus uh, says that the Islamic State is not the biggest threat that the U.S. faces in Iraq. He says, the foremost threat to Iraq's long-term stability and the broader regional equilibrium is not the Islamic State, rather it's the Shiite militias, many backed by, some guided by Iran. Well, because the United States backs ISIS and guides ISIS. That's where we got this in Syria. That's where they came out of. And then they go on to point out in the Politico article his credentials. They said, the White House confirmed Monday that the administration is consulting Petraeus for advice on how to deal with the threats posed by ISIL, despite his recent admission that he shared classified information with his mistress. Now, when this happened with uh, Snowden, of course, there were calls for him to be arrested, calls by Fox News commentators for him to be assassinated. No such calls for David Petraeus when he violates the law, when he shares classified information. No, he gets uh, a presidential, uh, becomes a presidential advisor and joins the chorus of those like John McCain singing bomb, 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 Iran. That seems to be the only solution to anything is more wars, not just foreign wars, not just wars in the Middle East, not just picking a fight with the Russians, but also picking a fight with the American people here domestically. And that's what we see in the SOCOM Jade Helm 15. And we have a report later in the broadcast, an update on that from uh, Joe Biggs. But look at the fact that when they contacted him from SOCOM, one of his friends told him, don't worry, it's just a PSYOP operation. Let me tell you, when you start a PSYOP operation against a group, that is a form of warfare. 
It's information war. It's a prelude to a real war. We need to understand, just as Putin understood, we need to understand that when they start preparing for war against you, when they start arming, when they start making maneuvers, when they start training to fight you, they really mean it. You remember that when he was asked that question, uh, do you really think that uh, these, these preparations are, are targeted towards you? Remember he just laughed for several seconds at the reporter for asking such a silly question. We should laugh when the government, our government says that these things are not aimed at us. Of course they are. That's why we have the 1033 program. They want to forward place these uh, military, uh, this military equipment like MRAPs in the hands of law enforcement, have them maintain them at the expense of the local governments so they'll be in place when they get ready to use them under martial law. That's why they buy the ammunition. That's why they have the training facilities at AP Hill, at uh, Fort Camp Lejeune, training against the American people. And now they're taking it to the next step because they can only do so much training in those facilities that are modeled after American cities. They want to get out into the open so they can actually see uh, what they're going to run into logistically. That's what this is about. And it is also the PSYOP war. Look at this article, Special Ops Targets Social Media. They admit that they're in a PSYOP war. They say U.S. special operations are adding a new focus to their portfolio of activities, social media and other unconventional information warfare threats. And of course, that was what was in uh, Jade Helm. They talked about unconventional warfare. They also mean by that asymmetric warfare, warfare against a lightly armed uh, community that you are heavily armed. So it's asymmetric in that sense, but it's also unconventional and the fact that there's PSYOP operations involved in this, and they're also going to be using social media. Not that they haven't already. Of course, they've been doing this for a long time. They're just now admitting it. This is what they say. Social media is another component of unconventional strategies and the security environment in general that is playing a central role in recruiting individuals to causes. And that is the express purpose, they say, of uh, this operation that they're getting ready to do. They're trying to figure out how they can recruit people they also want us to get accustomed to seeing the military in a large presence in our area. But they also want to establish contact with local governments, determine who they can trust and who is going to be a problem. We want to know that too. We're going to be talking to those people that they're going to be holding these operations with as well. We want to know why they would invite them if, in fact, they are going to invite them. And make no mistake, this is a multi-pronged attack. Look at this article up on Infowars.com. HBO documentary hypes the militia threat. Again, coming out and looking at people who are training with firearms, people who have a militia saying they're the cause to be concerned and we need to be protected against that. That's why we have all of these militarized operations coming in. And understand too, this is not about training for a foreign war. They don't need to work with the Iranian police when they invade Iran and put boots on the ground. This is for domestic use when they train with the police. And of course, they want to know everything we're doing. That's another part of it. That's how they measure to see if their PSYOP is successful, is to monitor all of our communications. And along those lines, we see again, as we mentioned earlier this week, CISPA is back. This time they're calling it CISA. They dropped the P, even though the protection for the corporations that are going to give up your private data is still very much a part of it. There's no protection for your privacy, however. On Infowars.com, we point out Senate Intelligence Committee advances surveillance bill in secret session. And the EFF, which this is a op-ed piece from them, says this fatally flawed bill must be stopped. They say the newest version of CISPA is the worst one yet. They say cybersecurity bills aim to facilitate information sharing between companies and the government. But their broad immunity clauses for companies, their vague definitions, and aggressive spying powers make them secret surveillance bills. CISA marks the fifth time in as many years that Congress has tried to pass cybersecurity legislation. Join us now in killing this bill. Absolutely, we need to speak up. We need to speak against this. We need to get this voted down as we have in the past. Now they go on to say that members of Congress, like Senators Dianne Feinstein and Richard Burr, continue to introduce bills that would destroy privacy protections and grant new spying powers to companies. And in this article, you can go back. It's a very good article. I suggest you read it. They talk about the different aspects of it. Of course, they're sharing information with the NSA. 
There's also the overbroad use of information. They point out that once this information, once your private information is turned over to the government, they can use it however they wish. They can pass it on to any government agency that they wish. And of course, they also point out that there's near blanket immunity for the corporations that turn over your information. They take the idea that any information that they collect as they're doing business with, with you is as much their information as it is yours. So they're entitled to turn it over to the government. That's the approach they would take and they would shut you down from coming after them with any civil or criminal actions. And if you think that's not really a big deal, look at how pervasive this is. Google is bragging about a new system of facial recognition that is the best ever. They say last week a trio of Google researchers published a paper on a new artificial intelligence system dubbed FaceNet. That sounds pretty ominous, doesn't it? They say that it achieved 100% accuracy when they looked at a database of 13,000 faces when they gave it a 260 million uh, uh, face database to look at, FaceNet performed better than 86% accuracy. In other words, they can take one picture and identify you out of essentially the population, nearly the population of the United States. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Now, of course, they're not alone. Facebook, they say, has deep face, deep face. And uh, they have algorithms that uh, picture, even when they're not labeled, they'll be able to go in and find your picture and match that up and tag it for you on Facebook. But that, of course, isn't where they really want to go with this. They point out, of course, that Google and Facebook are not the only ones doing it. Microsoft, Baidu, Yahoo are also doing it. But they say, look at the future. And, of course, this article that's coming from Fortune magazine. Now, of course, the writer for Fortune magazine really, I think, takes a very Pollyanna approach to this technology. It's not only gee whiz, he understands where this is going, but he totally doesn't see the problems with it. He says, that's not all that's going to happen, he says. As consumer robots, driverless cars, and smart homes become real, deep learning will be there too, providing the eyes, the ears, and some of the brains for our new toys. Something tells me that DARPA is looking at Google's FaceNet and getting pretty excited too. Wow, isn't that exciting? Isn't technology great? When it's abused and turned into the most radical surveillance state the world has ever seen. As William Benny said, not even George Orwell could have anticipated what we're in for. But they think it's a great deal. It's going to make the stock prices go up. Stay with us right after the break. We're going to talk about the National Adult Immunization Program. Yes, vaccines for everyone. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fuse with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever 
to secure this true form of oil of oregano. Now available in our limited first run at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Now, we've seen a lot of movement throughout the states trying to destroy informed consent, calling it a personal belief exemption. Don't ever let him get, use that terminology. You have to take the high ground, call it what it is, taking away our informed consent. But that's not the only thing they're doing. They're trying to create registries of people who haven't been vaccinated. They're trying to keep children out of school if they don't have their vaccination record, getting people uh, off of their job, getting them fired, making a condition of employment. Look, they didn't do this with HIV when it first came out, when we didn't know the mechanism for it transferring to people. They didn't segregate people out of their jobs. They didn't kick them out of school. They don't kick kids out of school even when they've been given a live polio vaccine and may be exposed to other children who haven't had a vaccination yet, who haven't developed an immunity to that. But they're using this to roll out a medical tyranny. Just as Alex Jones pointed out yesterday in Texas, there's a bill, uh, 538, that has as part of a medical response internment camps. It is going to be used to bring in martial law. And we see this from an editorial on the New York Times by Bill Gates. It just came out two days ago. How to fight the next epidemic. He says, the Ebola crisis was terrible, but the next time could be much worse. Let me tell you something. The Ebola crisis is not over yet. Back in September, Sierra Leone quarantined a million people for 72 hours. They're about to have another 72-hour quarantine. They're going to quarantine two and a half million people this time. Not one million, two and a half. We already have over 10,000 people who have died from this. It's about 50 times larger than the previous larger Ebola outbreak. There's many times more healthcare professionals that have died from this outbreak than the previous greatest Ebola outbreak. There's something fundamentally different about this one. Perhaps there were some gain of function experiments that went on with this. Maybe this is a weaponized version. Whatever, they still don't have it under control. He talks about how uh, as awful as Ebola is, it only spreads through physical contact. By the time patients can infect other people, they're already showing symptoms of the disease, which makes it relatively easy to identify. Well, maybe, maybe not, because it certainly is not under control yet. Even in Guinea, where they said it was under control, we've now seen an uptick in the number of cases in just the last week. And in just the last week, we've had 25 healthcare workers from the U.S. and U.K. brought back into these countries because of exposure to Ebola. But I think one of the things that concerns me the most is when you look at these gain-of-function experiments that the CDC uh, talks about on their website. And of course, what Bill Gates talks about is that it may be something that is easily transmitted uh, via airborne uh, transmission, like flu. And he talks about, uh, of course, the flu epidemic uh, that everyone is familiar with around World War I, the Spanish flu. We have the most virulent strains of flu that we know being enhanced for gain of function by the CDC and other bioweapon labs in the United States. They admit it on the CDC's website, and they say, listen to the logic of why they would do this. They say that they want to enhance these uh, flu vaccines artificially in the lab, genetically modify them to make them more resistant to uh, treatment, to make them more easily transmittable, because that could happen in nature. And if it happened in nature, they will have the vaccines ready to handle it. What an absurd justification for that. There's practically an infinite number of ways that these things could be modified. It's not going to be necessarily the way that they did it, but they're creating a new threat and the vaccine for that new threat at the same time. And we've already seen the many accidents throughout uh, CDC and associated labs in the United States. The one that's happening that's ongoing right now in Louisiana with Bert Balderia Pseudomaliae. They don't know how it got out of the lab and they don't know the extent to, uh, to the environment that it's escaped to. But they enhance these and then also at the same time create a vaccine. Now listen to what Bill Gates has to say because his solution, of course, is one of tyranny, big government, global government. He says, we need to invest in disease surveillance. We need a database that's instantly accessible to the relevant organizations with rules requiring countries to share their information. And we need military resources that are ready to respond. 
And then he goes on to say, the United Nations should empower and fund a global institution to coordinate these efforts. There you go. You can roll out world government with a pandemic. Maybe a bird flu that was given enhanced capability at a CDC lab and just happened to escape. But of course, we have to have a global organization to force the countries to do this, to surveil everybody. That's Bill Gates' solution. Now, we've got something coming up in just a few days. We have the National Adult Immunization Plan has been put out for comment. That's been extended for another three days. So on Monday, they're going to stop public comment on it. You need to understand where this is coming from. They had an immunization plan that began in 2010 to try to increase the number of people in America that had been vaccinated for all sorts of things. That's why you're seeing all of these vaccines being uh, given out in retail centers, uh, you know, given, <laughs> given out at uh, shopping centers, giving out at drugstores, everywhere. They're encouraging people to get shot up with vaccines for everything. Even at McDonald's, of course, they're doing this. But that's, it's not enough for them. So their 10-year plan doesn't look like it's on pace. So now they're going to accelerate it for the final five years. So this National Adult Immunization Plan is a five-year plan to push this on people. And this is the way they introduce it. They say vaccine-preventable diseases take a heavy toll on adults who are 18 years old and older. They say the diminishing function of the aging immune system reduces the immune response to vaccines and underscores the need to develop more effective products for older adults. In other words, when you're 18, your immune system is already aging. And so you've got to get those vaccines. They break this down into various age groups and various conditions. And they are looking to get about 90% across the board on most of these vaccinations. Notice in that first category there, they've got pregnant women. And they say right now in 2012, 52% were getting vaccinated for the flu. Pregnant women. 52%. But they're not happy with that. But they don't have a target number for that category yet. But most of the rest of them, it's a 90% target rate. And then finally, in this document, this is a very long document. I'd suggest that you take a look at it. One of the things they said is they have opportunities in a changing policy landscape. And they explicitly talk about Obamacare. They say the changing landscape of medical care and preventative health services as a result of Affordable Care Act implementation will help them to push vaccines on the public. Now, you might ask yourself, you know, why is it that we've never seen any other pharmaceutical products being pushed for universal consumption, mandated for universal consumption? Understand that the vaccine, that the pharmaceutical industry has immunity for vaccines. We may not get immunity from diseases, but they have legal immunity from the side effects and the damage that their vaccines do. That's what the vaccine court is there for. So when you look at it from a pure profit standpoint, of course they're going to push vaccines on everything. They announced about a year and a half ago they were going to stop all antibiotic uh, research. They were going to focus exclusively on vaccines. Why is that? Well, there's not an antibiotics court. If they damage people with antibiotics, you can sue them in court for damages. You can get compensation. Not so with vaccines. They control that very carefully. So it's all about profits. It's all about immunity. But it's going to be used for medical tyranny. And you've got people like Bill Gates pushing for a world government to administer his vaccines and his epidemic police. Well, stay with us right after the break. We've got a slew of special reports. We've got a report on uh, DU babies, another one on what's going on the border. Racism is on the menu at Starbucks. And, of course, we have that report from Joe Biggs on Operation Jade Helm. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must 
must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-888-253-3139. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. Thousands of South by Southwest festival goers are completely unaware that they are under an intense PSYOP as they make their way through the streets of Boston. What started as a place for bands to get exposure is now a joint mind control operation between corporations who are fighting to stay relevant and hip and the city of Austin, which rakes in millions in tax revenue. And of course, there's nothing more trendy and hip and independent than General Electric sponsoring a barbecue pit. That's right, GE's Barbecue Research. And of course, throughout this barbecue pit, where General Electric sponsors it and puts their logo everywhere, you have even more compendium advertisement telling you to sign up for more things like Snapchat, where you'll also be hit with Google Ads that track your location and steal your passwords. And also go ahead and sign up for their newsletter. Learn more about General Electric. It's cool and trendy because remember, it's all about targeting a new audience for these dying old companies and TV channels that have absolutely no subscriptions, absolutely terrible credibility, and they want you to buy their total garbage. Here the blueprint to create and sustain a mindless party culture industry is enabled by thousands of gullible attendees looking for a chance at stardom and the armies of volunteers looking to break into the industry. In order to break people out of their trance, we have focused most of our attacks on the blue chip corporation McDonald's. Most of the ingredients in the food of McDonald's in America are banned in 19 other countries. And guess what the source is for us knowing about GMOs in your food? McDonald's.com! Yay! Silicone might be good for your girlfriend or wife, but it's not good when you ingest it. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm not loving it. Which, in addition to giving away food containing estrogen mimickers, GMOs, and plastic-like cancer-causing chemicals, is subliminally attacking the subconscious mind with images of death, deformed, and diseased children. Here are some of the examples. And they tell you at McDonald's in downtown Austin, they show mutated dead children with pus pouring out of their eyeballs and welts all over their bodies. Enter here at your own risk and doom. Come and drink from the well. Join us, ah. But we must first warn them. We must first let them know before they have passed the gate. These are the innocent victims of the Battle of Fallujah. These horrible birth defects and deformities were brought on by the use of depleted uranium bombs and shells dropped by the U.S. government. Fallujah was bombarded by U.S. Marines in 2004. Iraqi doctors there have complained since 2005 of being overwhelmed by the number of babies with serious birth defects. Well, don't you think radiated mutated creatures, humanoids, I mean, that, that, that's a great way to advertise McDonald's, isn't it? You know exactly what all those animations uh, looked like, the skulls, the rotten kids, the mutated people. It's the world after a nuclear war with mutants everywhere, and I guess that's part of the McDonald's promotion. These types of birth defects are now showing up in the children from vets who serve there. But this is not just limited to McDonald's. The CIA has been using art as a weapon since the 1950s in a program called Long Leash. 
And now that the CIA is openly operating domestically, we can expect more attacks to our mind, body, and soul. McDonald should be shamed for invoking death, disease, and deformity as something trendy. But by not speaking out, we have only ourselves to blame. Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality Silver Bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your Silver Bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding and making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to really Realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the Info War to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. A Border Patrol agent has testified that the Department of Homeland Security is deliberately fudging data to hoodwink the American public into believing that the border is secure, when in reality it is overrun, with 60% of all illegal crossers going uncaptured. Out there in our areas of operation, we leave large swaths of land uh, uncovered, um, maybe 20, 30 miles at times. I've been told by our chief of our, uh, of our sector that we are going to bleed heavily on our flanks at all of our stations. The western flank usually gets neglected because we don't have enough manpower to get out there. Our agents will count the foot sign. They will call it in, and at the end of the day, the numbers get manipulated so that it doesn't show up uh, correctly. One, one time I asked the sheriff, I said, can we go sit down on the border all night long with your, your scope truck and see what we see. In six hours, we saw one Border Patrol agent. You know, if I had to estimate, and I could not prove this, but I would estimate that 50% of the people coming across that ranch at least are not apprehended. My great-grandmother and my grandmother uh, grew up right alongside the river. And what my, my grandmother would tell me was when, when she was young, people would come up and, and they would give them food and they would, you know, feed them, uh, give them some water, let them sit in the shade for a little bit, and then they'd send them on their way. Uh, now the same people that live down there on that border, they say it's a different type of people that are coming. It's a different generation that's coming through. Now when they see people walking up the, the gravel road, they go inside, they shutter the windows, and they lock the doors, and, and they just don't want any part of it not because of some sense of country or, or, or whatever the case may be, it's, it's a sense of personal safety. These ranchers and farmers and these citizens that live in these vulnerable areas are afraid to leave their homes. For the fact, they'd be breaking into Scott Arena, for example, I'll speak on his behalf. He's been broken in four or five times. One time holding the door closed while they're trying to break in. Growing up in the valley, we spent a great deal of time on the river. You, you go down, you ski, you swim, you picnic, you camp out. People had camp cabins, people had portable uh, trailers down there that they kept. It was a very uh, relaxed atmosphere. If you go down the river right now, you will see it's all gone. It is all gone. No one does any of that anymore. No one. And there's a reason. It's not the immigrants. It's the cartel. But I heard 
we're not even prosecuting, for example, uh, marijuana smugglers unless they have at least 500 pounds of marijuana. We just we don't, we don't, don't bother to prosecute. And, and the jurisdictional battles is, I don't want to touch that prosecution. You take care of it. Teenagers are an example. I think we have four or five in our jail right now that are remanded uh, juveniles that have been uh, arrested, picked up. We actually remand them as adults and put them in our center to prosecute them. Federal government won't prosecute Again, them. Again, so the drug traffickers use teenagers because they won't prosecute. And uh, I was talking to the sheriff in Yuma, Sheriff Wilmot, last night. Uh, there's an issue right now where uh, those illegals that have child or that pornography, child pornography, they won't prosecute. Uh, some of our agents that get assaulted, if it doesn't meet the threshold, if he doesn't have enough blood or bruising, um, they, they, don't, they don't prosecute. Some of these people that were coming, they could have taken the bridge. They could have come across through the port of entry uh, de uh, ask for um, uh, amnesty or, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for, credible fear, and, and it would have been granted, um, and they would have broken no laws. But the smugglers control who crosses where. If, if a, group of smug a group of immigrants is, are walking towards the bridge, the, the cartels will come up and say, look, you're not crossing that bridge, you're going to go through this river. No, well, I'd, I'd rather cross through the bridge. Well, you don't have a choice. You're going to cross through here at this point, at this time, when we tell you, and on top of that, you're going to pay us and they send them across when they want to send them across, where they want to send them across, because they know it's going to tie up our resources. And in doing so, then they can do the end around and, and run some either uh, high level, uh, high interest uh, illegal aliens or some drugs around the backside when all of our agents are tied up with a group of say 80, 90 or 100 people trying to get them sorted out. Uh, we spend more money on these kids as they come across and we spend our own, our own people. Breitbart News has acquired an advance of Heritage Foundation Senior Research Fellow Robert Rector's upcoming testimony before the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. He states that the lifetime costs of Social Security and Medicare benefits of illegal immigrant beneficiaries of President Obama's executive amnesty would be well over a trillion dollars. DAPA recipients would earn $7.8 billion annually due to the earned income tax credit and the additional child tax credit. Retroactive costs of the EITC and the ACTC with the IRS policy allowing illegals to claim up to three years of tax benefits for illegal work could be an estimated $23.5 billion. Rector points out that the average DAPA-eligible family already receives around $6,600 per year in means-tested welfare benefits prior to Obama's executive action. That aggregate cost is around $13.4 billion per year. Rector argues that future legislation could eventually make DAPA-eligible families able to get coverage under Obamacare at a cost of $14 billion annually. Rector also states, on average, the combined cost of means-tested welfare benefits currently received, the EITC and the ACTC cash, and potential Obamacare benefits would come to $17,800 per year per DAPA family. The aggregate cost to the taxpayer would be over 35 billion per year. But I think it's time America gets alarmed. Uh, they are, they've already come through here. It's us as the humanitarian crisis, yeah. and it's an OTM crisis. It, it, just take out the factor of the women and children. It's an other than Mexican crisis right now. We're you know, being invaded by third world country people, and in those third world country people are the special interest aliens and our borders are porous they they feel like they're wide open right now and that that's a dangerous scenario but i did discover and i think this is laid out very clearly in the blog uh that uh among the, the human trafficking going on in belize uh is a large number of lebanese males coming into the country with passports uh, from lebanon saudi arabia afghanistan uh and are given brand new identities brand new names and using handlers handled off ultimately into america with a very dangerous package now that surprised me that shocked me well and you know the thing is is that you know it's coming through down here but it's not necessarily going to affect down here because we're not really a good target, you know, there's nothing down here worth blowing up. Um, but you get up into, say, the Austin or, or, or the New York or the Boston or, you know, any, any major city, Dallas, and, and that's where the target is. So, unfortunately, it's not going to, fortunately, unfortunately, I guess, it's not going to happen down here. We're just watching the parade go by and whatever happens is going to happen somewhere big where it's going to affect the rest of the world, not just us.
Jeez. Yeah, well, and you know, I, I you know, I, I'm thankful to, to you guys in the media because you guys are really putting putting the word out when the border patrol is really trying trying to stifle everything, and, and you know, if people really knew what was going on down here, um, you know, they'd be held to pay. John Bound for Infowars.com. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit madein1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now I'm going to go over an outline about an upcoming operation that will be led by the U.S. Army Special Operations Command, which has under that the uh, U.S. Navy SEALs, Air Force Commandos, Green Berets, Delta Force, 82nd Airborne, Marine Expeditionary Fighting Forces. This will be a large-scale operation on American soil. Let's take a look at what that means. I'm here to talk about a massive military drill that will be conducted on American soil from July 15th to September 15th of this year. U.S. Army Special Operations Command calls this operation Jade Helm 1-5. The logo for this operation has a shoe standing on cross arrows over a sword that says, Master the Human Domain. This shocking operation is about a brutal martial law takeover of what SOCOM calls hostile states. Both Texas and Utah have been painted red. And the legend it states that red is a hostile area. Now, why is the federal government calling Utah and Texas hostile? Is it because we're awake to the tyranny in Washington? Or is it because we're pro-gun patriots who love the Constitution? We know that large portions of the military come from these two states, and our government has clearly come out and stated that returning vets are its number one threat. Operation Jade Helm 1-5 will be conducted over eight weeks to train U.S. Army Special Forces, Navy SEALs, Air Force Special Ops, and USMC Special Ops, along with my old unit, the 82nd Airborne. Now, these troops will be preparing for unconventional warfare. Unconventional warfare consists of activities conducted to go after a resistance movement or insurgency. This is a straight up in your face training to target American citizens who are part of this fast growing liberty movement. They aren't playing around people. They know that constitutionalists will stand up. They see us as a threat to their powerhouse. They know that Texas could break away and become its own. That's why they are coming here. They are saying this operation will be conducted in Texas because Texans support military operations. Yeah, we support military men and women who go after the bad guys, not when it's American citizens. They're trying to force vaccines on us. They're trying to take our guns and they want to ban the ammo. They're making moves to prepare for a complete and total takeover. We need to wake up. Right in the SOCOM document, it clearly states that operations will be conducted outside of government owned land. This means your backyard people. They say this exercise will be used to hone advanced skills with low populations with access to the towns. They will be operating in and out around the communities where anything out of the ordinary will be spotted and reported. They say this is an opportunity to work with civilians to gain their trust and have an understanding of the issues. David Knight and I went and showed you the Asymmetric Warfare Training Center at Fort AP Hill in Virginia. That was a large martial law training facility. This was like a small urban town to scale with a subway, church, mosque, soccer field, torture chambers, traffic circles, stoplights, and so much more. And there's also another one in North Carolina that is used by the Marines. You know, in the military, they say you train how you fight, and you also train in areas similar to the theater of your operation. These urban warfare sites that look like rural America keep popping up all across our country, and now they want to actually bring one to a real community with people. This is not a mock setup. This is a real town.
Now, residents, don't be alarmed if you see an increase in aircraft activity. It's just 1,200 special operations troops blazing overhead in helicopters. They say that this increased aircraft activity will be at nighttime. Now, what happens at nighttime, you might ask? Well, me being a former Army vet of both Iraq and Afghanistan, I can tell you one thing, that the special forces do snatch and grabs at nighttime. This is what they're trying to do. They're trying to de desensitize the public. They want you guys, the sheep that aren't out there paying attention, to get so used to this military occupation happening here in the States. The war is not with the Russians. The war is not with uh, ISIS. The war is here at home. The enemy is red, white, and blue. It's people who like the Constitution. It's people who are pro-gun. It's the people who are returning veterans. It's the people who actually care about what it means to be an American. And it also states that some individuals, i.e. the operators, may be conducting suspicious activity designed to prepare them for complex environments. Um, what complex environment? You mean America? Um, yeah, I think that would be a very complex environment if the government tries to turn the military on its own citizens. They are already conducting operations in Utah right now at this very instance. The U.S. Army soldiers from the 202 Military Intelligence Battalion are conducting scenarios based source operations and mounted and dismounted surveillance training in Salt Lake City. This is a complete and total psyop, plain and simple. It's right here. We've given you the document. Read it over, share it, and pass it on. Well, I hope you learned something from this. I hope you are more awake to the PSYOP that is going on with this Jade Helm 1-5 operation. I hope that you see this video, you take the information in, and you share it with other people. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you never-before-seen footage of Obama Deception 2 that shows how government-run PSYOPs in other countries are now being implemented here at home. You have been warned. The creeping mind control psychological warfare operation that has been underway for so long in America and has reached new and incredible heights under Obama. They've been manipulated. They've been brainwashed by scientific systems of control. We are also requesting that your team of advisors include a senior officer who is thoroughly experienced in uh, psychological operations. Very well, sir. I think we can provide you with an expert on the subject. In the past 20 years or so, more than 50 Pentagon psychological warfare training films have been released. These were previously classified. And watching them, you realize that all of these technologies have been brought home against the American people. To establish the target audiences for any military psychological operations, all functional groups must be checked and their reaction to the military establishment determined. Yo, yo can you get that camera off of us, sir? Sir, can you get the United States first? All right, but well, he could get that camera. I'm saying get the camera out of my face. That's no, no. what I'm saying. You're on the streets of New York. So what country. does that mean? I'm saying get that camera no, out of my face. That's no, what I'm saying. It's a free country. Fuck wrong with you. It's a free people, country. Man. Get this damn camera out of my face. Oh, this isn't Nazi Germany. There's no camera in your oh, face. My God. Hey, move to Russia. Okay? Yo, Doug. Doug. We can have cameras on the streets. I said, get it out of your my face. Your guy starts cussing at us. I said, get it out of my face. That's what I'm saying. It was never in your face. Are you crazy, man? We're just walking down the street. Teacher. Writers and publishers. Farmers. And religious leaders. And as KSLA News 12 Jeff Farrell discovered, the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. Gun confiscation is exactly what happened during the state of emergency following Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. U.S. troops also arrived, something far easier to do even now thanks to last year's elimination of the 1878 Posse Comitatus Act. That forbid U.S. troops from policing on American soil. Easing public fears and quelling dissent would be critical. And that's exactly what the clergy response team, as it's called, helped accomplish in New Orleans. We interrupt our regular programming for this special report. Reports of possible illegal activity by a local militia group appears to have spurred law enforcement into action. John Gleason has our story. This is the scene of an intensive investigation into the operations of an extremist group reportedly planning a series of terrorist attacks on U.S. cities. 
Details are sketchy, but allegedly the militia was using this house to store a cache of military weapons. A hazmat unit is now inside the house searching for evidence, while behind me are other local fire and hazmat teams. The FBI is here, as well as other agencies. Earlier today, police raided the house and arrested two men on charges of illegal possession of firearms, but they apparently found more than they were bargaining for. Propaganda is material that is not concerned with, with the facts, uh, that in fact will have, that, that, and that bears no relation to the facts, and that there would be no um, expectation that what, what the information is putting out is true. They're actually taking statements made by the U.S. government and by these corporations, and sometimes airing them in their entirety. So there's not much of a filter or a watchdog filter going on. They're just taking whatever these officials are telling them and throwing that on air, and that's not journalism. Journalism involves actually taking the statements these individuals say, investigating them to see if they're true, and then coming to a conclusion and printing that for the public. Fake news and fake newscast is the essence of brainwashing. It was a press right, conference without the press and with softball questions uh, lobbed in. Are you, are you happy with FEMA's response so far? I'm very happy with FEMA's response so far. Sure looks real, but those people asking the questions at a FEMA media briefing Tuesday weren't reporters, they were FEMA employees. Can you address a little bit what it means to have the president uh, issue an emergency uh, declaration as opposed to uh, uh, major disaster declaration. We're about to have a short course in missile identification. This is a Scud. You can tell it by its distinctive label. Now when the missile is launched, the first thing you look for is the plume sticking out behind it. Now when you detect this, you can tell it's been launched. Thank you. Yeah, show me graffiti. It's important to note that for many of you that have been awake for a long time, this propaganda seems childish, ham-fisted. Remember, it's targeting unconscious people that are not aware of the psyop. When we awaken people to the manipulation, then they're able to figure out what's happening. So it's important not to laugh at the victims of this system. Well, that's it for tonight's news. If you're watching this on YouTube, please become a subscriber to our channel. And if you're not a subscriber to Prison Planet TV, Please become a paid subscriber. That helps to support our operation financially. It helps to pay for my salary. It helps to pay for our trips to cover news as it breaks across the country. And it brings you the news each weeknight as it's happening, as well as access to all of Alex Jones's documentaries. And that can be shared with 20 people simultaneously with just that one account. Well, join us again on Monday at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.